So this session, we have Sean O'Sullivan, who is founder and head of SOSV. SOSV actually, SOS is actually his initials. He was a super angel. And so that's, that's the origin of the, of the name SOSV. Um, I came across SOSV is actually because of IndieBio and my portfolio companies are actually both uh, IndieBio companies. So I'm a huge fan of uh, what Sean has built in San Francisco and now New York. Um, I'm trying to fill a void for uh, biotech invest, uh, both investors and founders, because it's a different, it's a different ecosystem from traditional software uh, startups. Um, there isn't as much information for founders out there. So just want it to be a free resource and also for the biotech community. Excellent. Um, I, I wanted to give some background on Sean because uh, I think from all of the interviews you'll see of him on online, he's quite humble. So he's not going to brag about himself, <laughs> but um, he's invested in close to a thousand companies. Um, it was 950. Just a thousand. It was a thousand uh, last month. Oh, wow. Okay. So my, my information company. is stale. So it's over it a thousand. Yeah. Just, it was an indie bio company from the UK that was our thousandth company that, um, that just joined the indie bio New York program. Oh, that's great. That's great. So over a thousand companies and he's um, not only is he a repeat founder, but what I found to be extremely special is that he's been successful in software, hardware, biotech, and humanitarian orgs, uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. So that part is extremely rare. Um, I, I've seen a lot of repeat founders, but they sort of specialize in one sliver, but to be able to be successful in all of these is um, I, I haven't seen another person like that. And so his- You, you didn't mention uh, that I was a, a, a singer in a rock band or a filmmaker, and that was good because I wasn't successful in those <laughs> fields. <laughs> I, I did see that you have a master in fine arts from USC. Yes, I, I did. I, I was a filmmaker. I did actually win some awards for some film, filmmaking, but nothing that got into wide theater distribution or anything else. Just, it's, you know, festival uh, awards and things like that. It's more than most of us. So um, mm -hmm. and then I also dug up that you own a lot of the patents on um, sort of that Uber and Lyft are probably illegally well, using. So you yes. might be able to monetize on that soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I have, uh, I think, over 20 patents that are underway. I think 12 or 13 that have been granted in uh, the creation of the ride-sharing uh, yeah. fields. Yeah. And I think the other thing that, you know, isn't as highlighted in a lot of your interviews is, you know, you're, you're really a humanitarian and a philanthropist. Um, Sean started Jumpstart International back in 2003 in Baghdad. Um, and as soon as COVID hit, you know, IndieBio was the first of, you know, of all organizations to come out and say, we will fund, you know, eight companies that are focused in this area. And I think you guys actually, not, not even including the portfolio companies that have pivoted to help. So we are, yeah. all of us are extremely thankful for what you're doing uh, and what you've already built. So yeah, with it's, that great, intro, it's great to see. And, and you know what, it'd be all meaningless unless there were the startups that were doing it in the first yeah. place. It's just, you know, sometimes we issue a call for applications or, you know, uh, raise awareness and then we get flooded with um, inbound uh, people that really want to help and we can, you know, give them that initial capital that helps them get off, off the ground. Yeah. And I mean, I highly recommend IndieBio um, as an accelerator. Um, you know, not only uh, have I been able to find great founders and portfolio companies there, but you know, the the people that are running the program are just phenomenal people. Um, I've done a number of panels with Maya and with June. Um, so they are scientists at heart, but with great connections and great business sense. And you know, that's I think that combination is what makes great founders and great companies. Um, yeah, absolutely. We'll have to get you uh, to hang out with some of the New York team as well. But oh, the, San the San Francisco team is spectacular and it is the heart of it all. And when you say I created IndieBio, uh, kind of, but you know, it was a team always that makes anything. I mean, even with the startups that I've run and built, it's always been, you know, you have an idea, you know, that's worth 1%. Uh, it's, it's the sweat and the, you know, the grit and bringing things into reality that, that is what, uh, what takes uh, just a tremendous amount of talent and a committed 
co-founding team and and the, the whole team the whole team I think this is also the sign of a of a really great leader is that you're credit you're always giving credit to your team, um, <laughs> <laughs> passing it off. Yeah, exactly. So so founders take note. Always give credit to everyone. Um, so I guess you know as um, to focus on uh, sort of the purpose of this whole series, which is to be a resource to biotech founders. Um, uh, IndieBio has seen some huge uh, companies, right? Geltor, Memphis Meats just raised 175 million. Uh, Clara Foods, um, you know, what? Just in the just in the food sector, I just yeah. calculated it in the last uh, six or eight months, eight months probably, because Perfect Day had a 140 million dollar round, 150 million dollar round uh, last October, November, and you know, it's been over over 500 million just in the uh, raised for just a handful of six or seven uh, of our cellular agriculture companies. It's been amazing. That's great. Um, if you look at the the huge successes, I, I think IndieBio has seen about 170 companies go through. Uh, that's including our Rebel Bio portfolio as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's been huge successes and then there's been smaller successes. What do you think are the, you know, differentiators between between the two groups? I, you know, sectors get hot, you know, and, and they take off and, um, and, you know, we've only, uh, we only back around 10% or 15% of our companies are in sort of cellular agriculture area, but mm -hmm. that area has really exploded really quickly. Some of the other companies that have also done really well and will be, we hope, you know, also multi-billion dollar, you know, industries that will be, cre be created and multi-billion dollar products. Uh, lines will be created out of things like, you know, therapeutics that, that you know, small molecule therapeutics that help, uh, you know, eliminate pancreatic cancer or, you know, various other types of, um, you know, we have broad spectrum, um, you know, anti-cancer technologies, for mm -hmm. example, and we have diagnostics that are yep. really coming into play right now. Massively important, one of our companies, Casper, that was, uh, I don't know, do you know Casper? I've but heard they, of the name. Yeah, but they, they, they have a CRISPR-based mechanism for detecting uh, COVID-19. Oh, nice. uh, it works uh, extraordinarily well, you know, extremely high l uh, limit of detection, you know, so it, it, extremely low limit of detection, I should say. Uh, it's, it's very, very accurate and very quick. Is this uh, the you know? Argentine one? That yes, it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, the, and... And so they, the, the thing that's available now is sort of the lab-based test. Everyone's using the PCR test for this, but yeah. this is a point of care device, you know, sort of like a $200 device that for $10 or less, there's a little cartridge that goes in. You basically yeah. uh, could, you know, basically put some saliva into the cartridge yeah. and then put it into the device. And then this is what everybody should be doing yes. in, when you go back to work. Just go back in an environment where everyone in that work environment doesn't have COVID and you're uh, safe to sort of work and you're not worried about, you know, spreading the, spreading the condition. And really, there's a lot of, I mean, there's so much terrible things with COVID. We're seeing, I guess, today yeah. the highest level ever of uh, COVID uh, positive diagnoses in, yeah. in, the, in the United States. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and we thought we were over the first wave when in fact, most of the states yeah. hadn't yet had the first wave. Yeah, exactly. uh, California is just starting to have its first wave and yeah. it's uh, scary, to, scary to see. Yeah. So like, this is important. Uh, it's important because I, we even had a partner at mm -hmm. SOSB who got COVID, his, his wife got COVID, his mother-in-law got COVID, his mother-in-law died. He was in the ICU and he is, you know, even he's a little older, he's in his mid sixties. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, but he cannot, you know, the, I don't, I, we're hoping he comes back a hundred percent, but mm -hmm. uh, at this point, you know, it's hard because like there, there, there could be permanent disability in many cases for, for a lot of people. Yeah. So he he's fine mentally and everything. And about a third of the cases of people in ICUs, um, they actually don't ever regain their full mental capability. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't have any issues there, but uh, he can't walk uh, up a flight of stairs without having to rest, or mm -hmm. he can't actually go more than a hundred feet oh, walking wow. without having to sort of sit down. Yeah. So it's you know he works out of his bed right right now. Yeah. 
So it's like the impacts of this disease are quite profound, even mm -hmm. for much younger people. Yeah. Um, and so, so we really have to act. Yeah. You know, those who can do must do. That's, yep. the, that's what, what I just keep telling everyone. Those who can do must do. I totally agree with you. And I think now is actually a critical time. Um, you know, if you thought two months ago was critical, I think now is even more critical because I think uh, one of the reports I read uh, this morning was that the newly infected are actually the young people. So yeah. the death rates don't look that bad, but if they, you know, go home and start visiting relatives, we're going to infect their parents or grandparents. We're going to see massive uh, fatalities. And we so, don't know. We don't know what the other impacts of this, you know, condition is far too young to know what are the yep. long lasting impacts of, of a recurrent disease. Yep. Like if it does recur, if it, you know, hopefully there will be really great antivirals that sort of knock it out, but there could be a lot of long last. Everybody was always just talking about the deaths, you know, okay, it killed a quarter of a percent of New York City in, a, in about two months. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty big thing. If you multiply that across the whole of New York City or across the whole of the United States, you'd see 5 million dead. That's a pretty big number. Mm -hmm. but, but if it's not, um, if it, you know, what about the people that recovered and have permanent disabilities, you know? Uh, it, you know, we really do have to be careful about this disease, making sure that not too many people uh, continue to, 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 to get it. So anyway, that's, you know, it does teach us very much how important life sciences um, mm -hmm. is um, and how nothing else, in some ways, yeah. almost nothing else matters unless you have your health. Um, so, so we have to really uh, recognize that, uh, you know, being being able to play a role in helping start and uh, get these startups uh, out the door and and uh, and and doing work in this field. I mean, we we have over three dozen startups that are fighting uh, COVID at, at this at this point, and it that includes some of the of the eight companies that mm -hmm. uh, that we funded recently uh, on, on COVID, but also other companies with antibody therapeutics or mm -hmm. antiviral therapeutics or um, just a whole range of different diagnostics and other sort of decontamination technologies and robotics and everything. That's else. awesome. Thirty-six yeah. companies. Over thirty-six. Oh wow! Uh, and actually, one of them just got an FDA clearance today, which I can't oh, actually say because it's today, uh, uh, and it's not been released yet. But it's um, it's it's for a device. Uh, uh huh. Uh, so uh, which is great. That's great. Yeah. Um, I, I saw another interview you did that actually said, um, you mentioned, you know, we spent all this money on detecting weapons from foreign countries or, you know, nuclear weapons when the one thing that killing the most number of people is a virus, right? It's a pandemic. Yeah. And so it really goes to show that we should be spending, we should be spending a lot more money on this. Yeah. Everybody has this misperception of what, what actually what humanity's suffering is based on. And yeah. it is not based on our, our fear, even of, you know, there's some valid fears of, of dictatorial regimes in Russia or in other places, you know, hoisting evil on the world and, foist, you know, foisting evil on the world. But, you know, so I'm not to say don't spend anything on those things, but what about all the people dying of Alzheimer's? Yeah. What about all of the people who are, are suffering from, you know, in this, this pandemic is is actually, you know, on the scale of things, you know, there are other uh, conditions which are even more um, less. I mean, they're less urgent because this is very very urgent, uh, mm -hmm. but they're they're equally uh, as important in terms of yeah. you know uh, the human cost. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah, and you know, cancers and whatnot. I think most of the things that we're fighting with right now are actually curable and curable in our lifetimes mm -hmm. in the next twenty years. Uh, for me in the next 50 years, 60 years for you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but, but uh, that's, the, that's the goal is, you know, to apply ourselves to meaning pro meaningful problems. Yep. I, I was just on a panel today and it was uh, three venture investors. And I think, you know, and I spent 18 years on Wall Street before this. And I think the huge differentiator is that venture allows me to hope, right? Yeah. Is that, you know, and I, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist, so it fits my personality. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There's another uh, data point that you cited, and I love that you have so much data. Um, uh, you mentioned that you know if uh, if China and India kept eating the same amount of 
meet as Americans do as they get richer and wealthier. Yeah. It would take four Earths to feed everyone. Um, That's right. Uh, including the population growth that we have. And in a bioreactor, we can grow food at 9x that at that of the pace that we can grow on land. And so bioreactor is probably the only way we can feed everyone. Well, I think the 9x is referring to just the energy savings. Oh, um, wow. Okay. So, uh, and, and in terms of the, the space savings, it's more substantial than oh, wow. that. Okay. Uh, and, and in terms of the, the, there's also other issues in terms of global warming, you know, pollution runoff. There's also water usage yeah. issues and, and, yeah. and all these other things. So it's, it's like stunningly important. It's in like, on, what, what you'd like to do as an investor is, Pick a uh, an unstoppable mega trend and yeah. invest in that area yeah. because um, y- you can be wrong. Uh, yeah. You know, VC is the field that people uh, say you know it's the only field you can be considered a genius for investing uh, for getting the you know nine out of ten decisions wrong, right? Mm-hmm. So you're investing in nine things that go to zero or sideways to zero yeah. or something. Yeah. And one that makes you look like, oh my God, yeah. you know, like Facebook or, 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 or whatever. And, and then you're like a genius. Uh, oh. So we, we, uh, we have a wide, you know, we, we, we've backed actually a number of unicorns at SOSV, uh, partially because we invest so, you know, in so many companies. Uh, but um, uh, but I, I do think that, you know, uh, you know, besides, oh, I forgot where I was going with my genius comment. But, but, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius when you're investing in a whole area, you know, and you're investing in a mega trend that's really, really going to matter. Um, you just have to be consistent, you know, and you have to, uh, and you have to see, uh, and you have to also create all the industries that are necessary for the main big industry to win. Once you have a good insight as to where everything's going, like we sell your agriculture, yep. um, you know, uh, there's whole new industries that need to yeah. be supporting uh, cellular agriculture. Absolutely. Uh, all the media that need that, yeah. that, that stuff needs to grow in. All the bioreactors that need to be created that you know increase the uh, the yields. Uh, and you know, there's just there's a whole bunch of runoffs as to what becomes possible once uh, the thing starts to succeed. So building ecosystems is really super valuable uh, mm-hmm. when you can. Uh, you know, start with, you know, one insight. And once it starts to take off, you can then build a whole, you know, a whole, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different uh, spinoffs and, and uh, companies that are useful for the, for all the industry. Absolutely. There was another, I totally agree with you on the scale and having the ecosystem built as, you know, that's what allows the startups to, to succeed. Um, you mentioned that Memphis Meets, uh, when they first came out with their, you know, first product at their first product launch at IndieBio, it was eighty thousand dollars per pound, and the, but the, they yeah. were able to lower it to eight thousand in just a year or something yeah. like that. Yes. So you know that cost curve is something that investors love, right? Right. Right. And well, I mean, even at eight thousand, it's not like something you'd sl- slurge on for a birthday, but it did then get down to eight hundred dollars a pound yeah. and then eighty dollars a pound. And so you know you get that you get that uh, yeah. that order of magnitude that logarithmic yeah. uh, you know uh, progression and then you know that's how exactly you know that's what made computers the yeah. unstoppable force that they were in the seventies and eighties and nineties yeah. uh, is is that you know uh, what's the law there uh, Moore's law yeah right so so we're doing the same thing with cellular agriculture but in order to do it you have to have all these other industries yeah. supporting it right all yeah. the Semiconductor manufacturers benefited because yeah. they had all the the equipment, the, the, the fab, you know, the foundries exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, so it's it's all of those supporting industries need to be there as well. Yeah, I, I totally. Agree. I, I think it's actually it's very apropos that Ginkgo BioWorks calls their labs foundries. Um, when I saw that at first, I was like, oh, I've heard that name before. That's a, that's what they used to call uh, hardware. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think, you know, one thing that I saw was that, you know, you have Ginkgo and you have Zymergen that can do the gene editing with the productivity. And then you also have Lanzatech, you have ABPDU, and you have these large fermenters for the scale to bring the cost down. And so I totally agree with you that spotting these trends, spotting that, you know, this, these infrastructure pieces are in place 
um, really allows you to be a good investor. Um, what other areas do you see that where you see these signposts lining well, up? Well, okay. I mean, we're mostly talking right now about you know bioproduction of of foods, but uh, there's there's obviously a, a whole bunch of other types of uh, you know of uh, ecosystems that can benefit. Um, and yeah, you know, an area that's sort of um, a bigger stretch for us, and it's an area that's uh, more highly regulated and therefore slower, uh, but it does have a, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hope and a lot of potential is applying, you know, uh, the design principles um, at to, to uh, fabrication of, of small molecule therapeutics. Um, and um, and we've backed a number of computational uh, companies that are looking at how to make drugs. Like one of them is called uh, 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 um, well, it used to be called Gavilon. Now it's called Ten DX. I think I'm getting it wrong. Oh yeah, I've heard of Ten DX. Ten sixty three or Ten DX. I can't remember. But uh, they they are um, so. But what they do is. Um, they uh, make uh, these uh, the the discoveries. You often have a discovery of some kind, like from nature, um, mm -hmm. and you're trying to biofabricate or you're trying to fabricate this small molecule therapeutic. But it, you know, because of the you're fighting a uh, a disease that's constantly mutating, like in a cancer uh, uh, case. Uh, what'll happen is that uh, that it'll only work. A little uh, yeah. while, and then, and then it will uh, overwhelm that mo molecular alignment. So, by actually designing the molecule in such a way that it resists mutations um, mm -hmm. uh, or resists the host mutations, not mm -hmm. itself, it doesn't mutate, but the the molecule can resist uh, host mutations from de degrading the effect mm -hmm. of the lock and key sort of uh, systems. Then you can actually. Uh, uh, make the therapeutics far more effective, and things like that are 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 very very enticing, very very um, you know using the power of computing um, to uh, take therapeutics into a, a faster realm of of types of development. We're we're seeing a wide uh, number of application areas in terms of just processing lots of uh, you know uh, shots on goal uh, mm -hmm. with platforms that can generate tens of millions of different types of uh, candidates for evaluation against an indication, you know, whatever the, whatever the disease is. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we see a lot of hope of things happening in a faster uh, period by using some of these um, technologies. So that's an area that's a little bit, um, you know, th that's an area that we're getting much more involved in now. We've been doing it for four or five years, but we're, we're throwing a lot more shots on goal and also funding companies to the ones that are actually developing this small molecule therapeutics to up to $2 million um, uh, a, a company, which mm -hmm. is more than our average $250,000 first check. Oh, wow. The way, the way that SOSB normally invests is a quarter of a million dollars mm -hmm. for, for our first um, uh, you know, investment into a startup. And then we follow on we're not like a one and done investor or accelerator typically just puts in the, the first check, like 120,000 bucks or whatever the normal accelerators do, um, software accelerators. Uh, but we will put in a little bit more because it takes a little bit more uh, for life science companies. Um, and then we'll also put in another couple hundred thousand on the next round up to a million and a half each round mm -hmm. uh, after they get through IndieBio. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as they get traction and as they as they move along, mm -hmm. so uh, and we'll do that even past you know Series A um, as well. So we want to be right there alongside the companies and learning with them and helping them uh, from our learnings across all the companies that we that we back. Got it. So the ther the computational therapeutics you're talking about is that very similar to high throughput screening. You can do hard, yeah, exactly. High, high through screening is another way of doing it. But there's there's a wide, there's a wide, there's also personalization which is possible through it as well. Mm -hmm. So you take like, um, like right now the way that people actually uh, treat cancer a lot of times is they'll say, okay, let's try, 
you know, this cancer drug against this person. But what they don't try is, and, and then they experiment and say, oh, that's not working, let me try a different thing. And it takes, you know, it's a very slow process and, and uh, it's very error prone. Yeah. Um, and you're experimenting on a live patient. Exactly. Uh, what you really want to do is you just want to try uh, in one circuit, on one chip, uh, a biopsy of the, that cancer with, say, 300 or 256 in one implementation that one of our companies has, is just to titrate uh, three different types of chemotherapies or uh, treatments against, um, you know, the same biopsy and see what is the actual titration level that works best for eliminating, annihilating the disease rather than letting it continue to grow, continue to mutate, and continue to out, uh, you know, uh, you know, so you do 256 tests, instead of doing it on a human, you do it on the, on the, on the cell, line, yeah. and then you see, how can we annihilate this thing, yeah. um, and that, that, those types of approaches of personalized uh, high throughput screenings are also, uh, you know, interesting areas, yeah. uh, you know, as well, and there's, there's loads of new, other things that, that are, there's so many ways. Like when we looked at COVID, like there's basically eight different ways you can stop COVID yeah. dead in its tracks. There's a lot of different things you could yeah. do. It's not just think, spike protein. It's not just a spike protein. I mean, you can fight the cytokine storm. Yeah. You can go after the, you know, you can go after the, the host-based antivirals. Yeah. You can go after, you know, um, the, the virus uh, directly with an antiviral for the virus. That's harder. Uh, and it's less effective because it does a lot of mutations, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of different yeah. things that you can uh, throw at it that, uh, you know, that, you know, you can go after the cell receptor, you can go mm -hmm. after the, you know, there's just so many different ways yeah. uh, you can do it. So uh, when you look at uh, that, you just have to be very, uh, you know, continue to say, okay, how, what sort of, what sort of approaches can we throw at, at this? And, and, SOSV, uh, you know, uh, IndieBio will invest in uh, different companies that just have different technologies. We won't go after, we won't back two companies with the same exact technology. Uh, mm -hmm. But if they're both going after a cancer, we're not going to say, oh, well, that one could, uh, you know, different technology, or whatever, that one could impact on the other company. Eh, you know, yeah. you know, every founder thinks that what they have will solve all the world's problems. And I yeah. love that about founders. Mm -hmm. But in fact, the reality is you have to be really, really focused on doing one thing really well. And by the time that you do that one thing really well, you'll have given up all uh, on all the other uh, possible things you could have done. And you'll have built a really great company doing that one thing better than anyone else in the world. Yeah. So uh, a lot of, you have to sort of, uh, deal with the fact that people have very greedy eyes, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and they have to really solve a problem really well, nail that problem, then scale that problem, scale that solution to that problem, nail it, then scale it. Um, this also works in software, uh, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, rather than just sort of go very wide and not yeah. really solve any problem. Oh, it's the difference between a vertical SaaS and a horizontal SaaS, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so to your point about, uh, uh, sort of personalized medicine. I, I see the trend um, described as going from, you know, it, we're reversing the trend and now we're going from in vivo to in vitro and to in silico, right? Versus mm -hmm. 10 years ago, it used to be the, the other way. Um, and I think it's just because we have so much more computational power and we have so much more data that in silico runs a lot faster. Um, what do you think are the limitations there? Because I do see a lot of investment dollars focused on it. Um, so I'll tell you where I'm coming from is, you know, I'm a huge proponent of investment in biotech. Um, my only fear is what happened in clean tech in 2005, 2007, right? Is that, you know, there's a difference between if you invest it in Amaris versus Zymogen and Ginkgo Bioworks, right? So uh, how do we make sure that, you know, we get to the Ginkgos and the Zymogens and how do we avoid the Amaris? Yeah. Um, it's funny because, um, well, I won't, uh, there's personal stories in there, but, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, yeah, so I think there's just, 
I'll, 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 I'll give you a, a, a different example as a way of how I think you can do it right. Um, like I'm on the board of a company called Sun Genomics. I don't know. Do you know Sun Genomics? They, I've heard of the name as well. Anyway, what they do is they, they, you give a, um, a lot of, a lot of diseases, even in immunology. I mean, 80% of your immune system is in your gut biome, believe mm -hmm. it or not. That's where the, so, um, and a lot of diseases, um, you know, uh, are related to your gut. Uh, therefore, you know, even brain uh, conditions yep. and, and whatnot, gut brain connection and all that. Yep. Um, and so if you look at the, um, you know, if you, in order to look at what's going on in your gut, people take stool uh, samples. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a customer of, of uh, Sun Genomics. I, I, I uh, have to refer to stool samples. I know that's not a polite thing to do in the conversation. But, uh, it's okay. But that's it's okay. Let's that. assume we're science. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and, and so, you, you know, uh, they have a little kid. You send off the kid every three months. And you get a, uh, and you get a rundown of what's going on with your uh, gut biome. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a personalized, uh, unique to you, um, uh, uh, combination of probiotics, prebiotics, and, and probiotics, mostly probiotics, that deals with the pathogenic microbes in your in your uh, gut and uh, tries to push out uh, the things that you're trying to optimize. Uh, they're trying to, you know, say you're looking for higher energy levels and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, or you're fighting depression or you have an issue with IBS or IBD, um, like. A, um, I forget what they stand for again. Do you know what IBS stands for? Irritable, um, irritable bowel. bowel syndrome. Yeah. yeah. And IBD is similar. But anyway, so you basically got these, uh, all these conditions, which are actually horrific conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, in the worst cases, like if you have an E. coli uh, mm -hmm. uh, condition, you can die uh, from yeah. it with a runaway uh, buildup. And, and actually, shockingly, 25,000 people in the United States die from E. coli wow. uh, uh, runaway infections a year. Wow. It's, a stun it's a stunningly terrible uh, thing. Um, and uh, so, but anyway, you can stop this, you know, uh, uh, by drowning out uh, the conditions that by, by having the right probiotics that, that are uh, changing the environment of your gut. There's also other ways to change it, you know, obviously, you know, uh, bomb your gut with um, uh, microbes or, you know, uh, antibiotics. Which is terrible in general yeah. because it reduces your diversity, but then you have to build your diversity back. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So, so anyway, but it can. There's obviously vari there's various different approaches, and, and and so we find that that there's quite a lot of hope in, even in conditions like autism. For example, I have mm -hmm. a son who has autism, and uh, there's something that people would have referred to as FMTs before, fecal matter transplants, mm -hmm. uh, which are now referred to as um, microbiota transfer therapy, or at least the, the state of the art now is microbiota transfer therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, you know, these are ways that can really have shockingly big impacts and can actually cure a condition that most people consi consider yeah. is a permanent condition. Uh, you can actually, you've seen, we've seen remarkable cure rates you know, wow. uh, in initial trials, we have to do a lot more trials uh, on this. Uh, so, um, but, you know, so you look at that and you say, okay, personalized medicine, um, you know, how does that, you know, how can you take, uh, you know, a, just a genetic test and instead of applying it to the genes of your human body and looking for BRCA1 or something, uh, is it okay? Is uh, the things we're talking about are fine to talk about? At yeah, this absolutely. Okay. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, fine. Uh, so, but you know, if you're looking at like what are the things that cause breast cancer, or what are the things that cause, uh, you know, some other, you know, uh, there are certain types of autism. There's 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 sing single gene mutations that you know that you can find that even cause autism. Most of autism is not that way. Uh, in fact, uh, most of autism seems to be um, uh, seventy five percent is non seems to be non genetic. Oh wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and we don't know what the exact numbers are, you know, uh, but uh, data seems to be pointing that it's much more non-genetic than it is genetic. Um, yeah. So, um, but what's, what's, when you look at, um, you know, that's just your human body, but you have 400 times as many genes in your gut uh, mm -hmm. as you do in the 20,000 or 23,000, whatever it is, 
uh, genes in your human body. Yeah. Uh, there's 400 times that. I don't know what that is. What's 400 times? 10 million genes because or something? Of, because of the bacterial genes? All the different bacterial genes. Ah, interesting. And all those bacterial genes are generating proteins. They're generating yeah. uh, particulate matter. They're generating small molecules. Yeah. And all that stuff is circulating in your body. Yeah. Um, and, and so you've got this drug factory in your gut that is doing all kinds of things uh, to, uh, to you. Um, and uh, so like looking at those genes and what the implications are uh, for your health uh, um, and, and, and there's some, we don't understand very much of it. Yeah, the whole metabolomics, uh, metabolomics, <laughs> people pronounce it differently. <laughs> I never know. I read the term and then I like, oh, I wonder how that's pronounced. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's the problem with science. It's like nobody, you're reading these stuff most of the time you, you can start a trend you can call it whatever you want it <laughs> yeah there you go there you go uh, actually i just uh came up with a term today uh protein farming uh oh. rather rather than cellular agriculture like cellular that's true well there's two different cellular agriculture applies for meat uh based yeah uh you know uh meat based uh you know like the memphis meats and things like that i think of that as more cellular agriculture and the perfect day kind of approach where you're actually yeah. generating milk or, you know, uh, whey proteins or egg proteins or whatever. I think of that is like, we could call that protein farming. Is that, you know, I, I, I it's also cellular agriculture, yeah. but it's yeah. just, it's just a different way of thinking about it. But anyway, uh, uh, I'm just trying to always try to make things more uh, understandable to people. Um, I agree. So, synthetic bio or some bio is, 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 is hard for people to, <laughs> to Well, grab. and they also, you know, it also has this, oh, why would I want to put anything synthetic exactly. in my body? Exactly. Well, actually, it's not synthetic. It's, it's, I mean, potentially synthetic, but like it's actually nature and using the forces of nature to create things that you already have consumed for tens of thousands of years as a human being. This is all grass product. So, you know, generally regarded as safe yeah. products. So it's more like protein farming. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of like that term. I hope that sticks. I um, also heard um, accelerated evolution. Yeah. Well, that's true too. And, and so those are, I mean, and, and listen, I mean, I'm not against design engineering better technologies. I mean, if we didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to cross from New Jersey into New York uh, using a bridge because the trees just don't stretch that long across yeah. the uh, Hudson River, you know, yeah. I, and it's much, you know, much uh, more difficult to have to get out and, and sort of try to balance on the trees and jump from one <laughs> to the other. So I like the fact that we actually engineered engineer a bridge, the bridge across yeah. the way. So if we have to engineer life itself, that's all right. You know, if, if we can, you know, if we do a decent job of it and if it's safer and better uh, than, than the previous way we used to do it. I'm not afraid of, of that. Uh, and I think that a lot of people uh, tend to, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I actually also believe in God. So this is a weird thing. Wow. But there, there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, that think, oh, uh, you know, we could never engineer life because that would be, you know, fighting God or something. So anyone who's against like using genetically modified organisms or whatever, ooh, that's against, you know, uh, God. It's not against God. God allowed us to build bridges. Yeah. God allowed us to, you know, he's not, you know, we have air conditioned homes. We, we wrap the water in our, you know, we could take nice baths, warm baths, <laughs> you know, so like it's not, you know, and lightning hasn't yet struck us. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, well, I don't think these things are uh, ex mutually ex exclusive. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm the, I'm the geeky scientist. I want to engineer everything. Um, so I do want to end on one, uh, one note, which is what's your, what's your advice to biotech founders? Yeah, well, um, you know, so my advice to any, any founder uh, is that you have to recognize that it's a long and hard road and just never, ever, ever give up. Yep. You don't, you're not doing it, even though we talked a little bit about money and about billion dollar industries and all that, it's not really for the money. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you go after it for the money, you're probably going to fail, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it's not the cause or the root of it. Like the people that do the best 
they're fighting cancer because their yep. their mother died of it, yep. or they're fighting uh, all of these conditions for really heartfelt reasons, yeah. really yep. heartfelt reasons, and um, and you know, or they're frustrated with the mm -hmm. existing uh, reality and they want to create a new reality. You know, yeah. so I like that Gandhi expression. If you if you're not happy, um, oh Jesus, I forget what the expression is. It's it's basically like looking in the you know, um, it, you're looking, you have to look at it in the mirror, you know, you have to basically uh, be the change. Or be the change it. you want to see in the world. That's it. Yeah. That's the expression. <laughs> this is an That's awesome note to, write, to end on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, my, my great pleasure. Thank you for, uh, for uh, putting this together, Gwen.